And if all its risks and responsibilities are clear, then we can welcome you to the Stunner Dogs. Clear as crystal, Motor Sama. Actually, it's a Motor Master. You and the other Senpai Tachi will notice me on the battlefield, Sensei. This I vow. Kanorazu. Can what? Just leave it to this off road chan, my lovely stunty senpai Tachi! <laughs> what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and word on the street is that Wild Rider went so loco that he changed his name and got locked up in a cage. So the Combiner Wars Stunticons had to take on a new hire by the name of Offroad, who was once going to be straight up TriggerCon Ruckus, and now is going to get redecoed into TriggerCon Ruckus for the club's fourth subscription service in 2016. I'm so tired of saying the word Ruckus, we're not even a minute into this, let's just stop saying Ruckus. Off-Road is a rip-roaring, ruckus-causing pickup truck which looks kind of small scale-wise next to the other deluxe Stunticons, but in that very slight way that I have trouble really caring about in a mainline release. He's very boxy and angular, looking like he'd do some damage in any kind of collision. And yes, he has just gone ahead and come out in Wild Rider's color scheme. The grey body, the red windows, the gunmetal hood deco. Alpha Bravo came off a touch more subtle in carrying over the colors of his predecessor. Off-Road is borderline wearing a Wild Rider alt mode costume, cut to fit over a truck rather than a car. He does have red squiggly lines on his doors to add his own unique sense of... flair, I guess? And hooray! More painted hubcaps! Off-Road has a foursome of 5mm ports on either side of his truck bed for weapon storage or what have you, but his hand foot gun has a special slit cut into it to allow it to install right into his truck bed, forming an additional engine of sorts. It's a real smooth piece of design, but man, it makes it tempting to paint the purple Menasaur piece up in steel metallics just to see how that'd look in alt mode. The big secret that Off-Road reveals as he transforms is that He's an aerial bot! At least he uses the same basic transformation skeleton that all of the aerial bots use. It's interesting to see that conversion sequence get reshelled as a truck rather than an aircraft, but it also was a bit of a bummer after the three far more unique shape-shifting schemes that the other Combiner Wars Stunticon limbs delivered. Off-Road's robot mode reveals a whole bunch of delicious turquoise on his previously hidden limb bits, which plays with his existing Wild Rider-y color scheme to provide him a bit more of a unique identity outside of his vehicular form. I legit adore the turquoise touches. Along with the toxic green on his face, I feel a very Euro G1 eccentricity that is way up my alley. Speaking of his face, that head sculpt has got a very G1 Ruckus helmet style going on, though the face is sullen, cheekedly creepy, and maybe a little sexy. Like those are lips that seek to rival the sensuality of IDW overlords. This portrait is an explosion of unspoken character and easily the high point of the entire figure for me. Off-road's engine-styled hand-foot gun is a four-barreled firearm that he can either hold in his hands or attach to his forearms. The mounting point is basically on his wrists, which looks pretty ridiculous for the bulk of the hand-foot gun, but kinda works for his axe. And man, this axe is kooky. It looks properly hatchet-choppy and ready to murder, but also has, like, trumpet buttons along the back of the axe head. Basically, it makes me envision Off-Road putting the handle up against his extremely handsome mouth and playing some kind of battle ballad to summon a giant dragon robot. And I don't know, grow a soul patch, go into MMA, and get into arguments on airplanes once he gets into his middle age years. Off-Road Chan is actually very aerial bot, but he does not carry the thing I was hoping he would carry over from the aerial bot genealogy, which is that his ball-jointed neck, like it's got waggle, but he can't look up. You know, he can do this, but then he's got that sticking out, and it's getting all weird. So, uh, it's still a good ball joint, but it's it's not Firefly's ball joint. He's got ball jointed uh, shoulders as well, which uh, are able to do this, and are able to do this. Can they do it at the same time, though? Well, they, they do kind of bang into his backpack. Uh, if you fold these things up, I find that it's able to slip back there uh, without much effort, and it doesn't, like, make his backpack fly open. So... It's an option, or you can just do this, or this, you know, separately, if you want to get something in between. Well, I guess you do have to fit, fit that in there. But once you fit it in there, holy crap, things are happening. Uh, he also has bicep swivels and, uh, very detented elbows. Uh, you know, basic 90 degree range. He's got a waist swivel, he's got ball socket hips, 
which have cuts in the top so he can high kick real well. Um, and, you know, they move forwards and backwards as you do. There's a thigh swivel. There's a knee joint, which is just a solid 90-ish. His uh, shins are kind of huge, but his thighs are kind of long enough, so it still looks like something is happening when he bends his knees. And that's about it. His feet are sculpted in that kind of ace stance uh, slant, so he can you know, sit down all happily as he's, like, singing his, his OP2. And, uh, I, you know, I dig it. Like, the, these things I thought were going to be a lot more troublesome. They certainly uh, are a thing to be aware of. They are a thing that can get in the way. But I don't feel like it's impossible to work around them like that or like that. And uh, once once these things are fit in there, because they're on their own hinge, they'll stay in place uh, as you're doing other stuff. So, I don't know. I think disposability, considering his, like, body shape and his big shoulder slats and his big backpack, it all works out okay. Off-Road's Aerial Bot genetics provide him with, honestly, the same kind of leg mode transformation as his other deluxe Stunticon fellows, albeit with his head attached to the combiner peg this time. He provides Menasaur with a big bad knee pad in this mode, and as it hides all of his turquoise, it also means that being a leg is the best way for him to camouflage in as a wild rider stand-in, if you want to maintain all the classic Menasaur colors. Off-Road's arm mode excited me for its shape and colors, but there's one big downer that cut me off at the pass. His own robot mode arms have got tabs to stick onto, except they don't stick. At all. The slots barely even grab on, and I tried modifying those connections a bunch in like both directions, thickening and thinning. It feels like they're more so there to guide the arm placement than lock anything in, only that means NOTHING locks the arms in, and they get bumped out of the way by things as simple as the vibrations of Menasaur's shoulders. It's a shame, as I love the return of the turquoise in this mode, less so for Menasaur and more so for mashup combinations. The shape of Off-Road's arm mode is pretty cool, and the shoulder's got a great focal point in the folded hood and silver hubcap of its visible tire. I guess I just gotta get some of those little clear rubber bands or something, or just get over the fact that bits might move. Like, there are worse things happening in the world. I had three slices of bread left, and one of them's green, so now I gotta throw the whole thing out. Oh, my life. Basically, I was really into off-road upon first sight, but once I got him in hand, he slipped below my expectations. His truck mode's fine. His robot mode is fine. I guess I was just really bummed out by the lack of solidity in his arm mode. His aerial bot similarities got me all excited, and then his non-functional robot arm locking tabs got me all sad. And while he's a fairly solid standalone figure, Dead End swooped in and drop kicked him straight out of the upper floors of my Stunticon rankings. To this day of recording, I'm still not sure which one's better than the other, but Off Road and Breakdown just don't give me the same fuzzy feelings that I get from Dead End and Drag Strip. But Off Road does happily fill in the color scheme spot vacated by Wild Rider, although, as we all know and hopefully predicted at the time, Wild Rider changed his name and came out anyway. I'm into the idea of reserve members for existing combiner teams, and both Off Road and Alpha Bravo deliver decent representations of that concept. Off Road is dripping with individual identity, and that continues to keep him from staying on the bench in my display. I just wish that I knew what was missing that'd make me look at him and say, Hooray! Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and man, I wish I liked Off-Road more. It's just that his retool ended up doing almost everything a little bit better.